And so at what point does Birdman come around? And is it kind of tricky because he wants to sign you and you're already signed? Uh, to be honest, it was more like uh, it wasn't kind of tricky. Birdman, uh, no, nah, let me start that back. Birdman come around on my second mixtape. I promise I never stop going in. And that's when I meet Thug. We get the first song we do is get, boy, get the fuck out of my face. Mm. Um, I don't know how long before then, Bird and Thug had already been communicating, but like, but you I, didn't know Thug outside of this. No, nah, I didn't know. Okay. Thug, nah, but no, nah, but I, I was I was a fan of Thug, right. though, like cause Thug had already, Thug had been rapping for in Atlanta for a, a minute. You know right. what I'm saying? So everybody had knew a Thug. You know what I mean? He just kept getting better as the years yeah, went by. Yeah, but I yeah. had met Thug when I uh, when I was working with Gucci uh, when, when he was signed with Gucci, with cause Thug would be over there at the studio me. Goes RP to take off. Mm. All of them would be like take off on the, like they would be on the couch. Thug over here, me and Gucci working. You know what I'm saying? Me and Thug was doing songs then. It's some it's some songs you can Google. Thug, Gucci and Corn. You mm. know what I mean? So it was like that's when I first met him. But now I'm signed. By then I went signed. You know what I mean? So now I'm signed and uh get the fuck out of my face. The first song we do, and after we do that song. Me and Thug uh, build a relationship. We just working every day, and it went from working every day to uh, corn. Uh, but you know, I've been. I want you to meet Bird. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know how long Bird and Thug had already been communicating. Mm -hmm. So I meet Bird, Bird in Atlanta, and he was like, "Hey nephew, oh uh, man, I, 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 y'all need to stay in the studio." So we started recording at Dart. Dart was Dallas Austin's old studio mm -hmm. um, at the time. So Bird was like, "Yeah, man, I'm a rent." He rented the studio out for three months. So we up there just working. Thug got a room. I got a room. So we just, you know, just working, working, working collectively. And he just like, nephew, we got to put this shit out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And he knew, like, I was. I had a situation with T.I.G. Thug was signed to Atlantic. It was like, we never, it was never a group. You know what I'm saying? And at this time, like, I'm not even knowing, like, he put it out as a group, you know what I'm saying? As I get older, it's like shit. Collectively, like shit. I know my paperwork's great. So long as this shit, you know, I know my I know my lawyer them got my back. So long as if it gets spent, I'm gonna get paid. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the music come out, and that was like some man, some of the best time of my life, but I was geeked the fuck up. Mm. So a lot of that shit have blurred me. It's a blur, right. You feel me? But but does that when you look back on that era, how long was the rich gang era? Where you guys were touring and really recording stuff? Because it wasn't that long. What was it, like a year? Uh, Maybe less. A, a year, a, probably a year touring, but I would say a year, probably about two years and a half from the work we did prior mm -hmm. to when y'all heard Rich Gang. You see right. what I'm saying? So probably about two years and a half, three years, three years at the most. And do you recall lifestyles just being this like another just explosion? Because that I, that was ridiculous. I remember huge. lifestyle was the first day I met Birdman. Mm. The first day I met Birdman, man, we I, I was doing a show in Miami. And my dad flew out to that show. And, uh, Bird came. I had just fell out at the uh, walkthrough. I just did the walkthrough video shoot. But I fell out. But the number I was getting, like, I got to go to this show. I busted my face. You know what I'm saying? I had to get stitches in my eye. So when I went, I got makeup on. You know what I'm saying? I had makeup on because I wasn't going to miss the money. Only time I wore makeup, by the way. Mm. I, I could do something right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, Bird in the club. So at the club, like, hey, nephew, come to the studio. So Pop was like, yeah, we're going to go to the studio. We go to the studio. He pressed baseball. He was like, nephew, I got this song. I, I think you'll sound good. I'm press baseball. Lifestyle. Boolin' in the Bondo. Was that that song? What? Or was that another song where he said Boolin' in the Bondo? Oh, no. I just remember Birdman said that on one of the songs. Oh, no. Did Bird, yeah, Birdman, did he talk on Lifestyle? I forget. No, probably not. I would remember if it was on that one. It was another yeah. song where he said Boolin' yeah. in the Bondo. I've just been thinking about him saying that ever yeah, since. Yeah, that's on the tape for sure. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, when he hit Space Bar, the Wii, I, boom, Space Bar, Lifestyle, come on. I go in there and knock my shit out, man. That motherfucker on the radio four days later. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was like a song that was so big that it felt like it after didn't the, need any help. It was just the, gonna be huge. After the song, and that's when... He came with like, man, y'all, y'all got to do a mid tape. We gonna do a rich game, do like the, the new rich game. Right. You feel me? That's like, that's what it was. Right. And so, would you say that during that time period, you and Thug were really like close friends, or was it just like a convenient musical relationship? And Birdman was really the thing that was keeping y'all together. No, nah, no, nah, nah, that was my dog. That was my dog. Right. Definitely my dog. It was Birdman, Birdman wouldn't keep me together. Shit, I made Bird through Thug. 
Right. I wouldn't have met Bird if it wasn't for the, you know what I mean? Right. And so when did that fall apart? And was it abrupt or sudden that you guys just stopped having anything to do with each other? Or how did that unfold? Um... You know, we you know, we all got our own side. The shit started falling apart. We, I feel like when we start going on, we start getting booked for shows and shit. You know what I'm saying? So it was like Together. Yeah, we all start getting booked together and ego played a big role in it. Uh certain people, uh, include myself, certain people felt like they should go last or certain people wanted more money and mm. you know, one of those, you know, I ain't gonna say too much, but right. it started falling apart around it. Yeah, you like kind of danced around giving like a full explanation of it in like a lot of different interviews where yeah. you just don't really seem like you want to put it out there like that. Like like your commitment to being a real dude in all this kind of like forbids you from putting it out there, even though obviously the fans have been really clamoring for that information yeah, for all these years. I just, you know, I try. I, I, say, I say a little, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes the best answer is no answer like I always say, so mm -hmm. I just say a little, but just try to read between the lines. You know what I'm saying? Right. What about that one show clip where you said something about, like, this dude look like Young Thug about the guy yeah, in the I crowd? I was drunk as fuck, man. I was drunk as fuck. And at that time, man, you know, me and him weren't talking, you know what I'm saying? Right. Because, like, I, we were doing a show, I think, in Rochester. And I think, man, yeah, guy that came and unplugged, I'm about to do Lifestyle. We on the same show, but me and Thug, we don't see each other. And the nigga, yeah, guy that unplugged the... Yeah, I'm plugged the goddamn my, my my DJ shit. I'm like, man, what? I look back. He like, yeah, man, yeah, got it. So we just get up out of there. We don't even like saying that we ran, but we just got like, man, cause cause Thor was performing after me. You know what I mean? So and that was uh, I saw him then, and you know that shit got squashed or well, like cause there ain't never been no real tension between me and him. Mm. It was more about the niggas around him making it and the niggas around me making it more more than what it was. Cause like. We would still see each other head nod, you know what I'm saying? Keep it moving, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Really been no real attention, but egos played a big part in that shit. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And so the the rumors that people have tried to put out there about saying that Rich Homie Quan snitched on somebody or whatever, that it was some street thing, was there, there's no truth to that? That's just people trying to figure out something? Well, I ain't never even heard they said Rich Homie Quan snitched on nobody. <laughs> That's crazy. That's my first time hearing it. Right. Yeah. Some, somebody tried to push that on me uh, in recent memory, and yeah. I was just like, I don't know where you're getting this information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, nah, nah. I definitely ain't snitched on nobody, bro. Poor paperwork. Okay, so do you feel like at that point, though, when that happened, yeah. did you feel like some percentage of the fan base kind of turned on you? Because you've seen this happen throughout rap history where, like, if two rappers have problems with yeah. each other, some percentage of the fans are going to yeah. side with one person over the other. And it I would say... They sided and the fact they no, nah, they didn't side. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna do it in order. They did side, but at that time I'm going through the litigation with TIG, so mm -hmm. I can't drop no music after the rich game. Right. Flex comes out in that time. You know what I'm saying? So I couldn't drop no music for two years. So it's like and thought hot as fuck right after that. So it's like they had no choice but the road that I couldn't drop no music. Mm -hmm. So yeah, of course I feel some type of way. Right. But not toward him, more toward the like the people. Right. You know what I mean? Because it's like the, the, the industry can be so fucking fickle where it's like that's that's why when you hear people talk about wanting to be a rapper, there's like party that wants to kind of like warn them about what a tough job it is and how much you have no fucking control over your career in and the, the sense and, that. And the shit's so political. And right. it's like it's dangerous, bro. Just mm. in like, period. It's dangerous, bro.